this is the machine light I was given uh, last week. I converted it from 25 to 12 volt using a, a spotlight head, a car spotlight bulb. It's got a little transformer with it. That's it there. I've simply bolted onto a big heavy lump of steel, which means I can use it on a bench or I can, it's portable, I can put it anywhere I want. It'll be quite handy up here because this it's quite dark in here and we're going to be doing some casting hopefully this weekend. So this should help with me, me light for me filming. This is the setup for broaching. I've already put the brooch through once. The brooch simply goes in, fits through that guide, and it's pushed down. The brooch is tapered as it goes down, it cuts a keyway. Once you've put the brooch through once, you need to put a spacer in behind it just to increase the depth of cut. What I put in there is a bit of half a half mil aluminium shim. Simply press the, the brush out, you press it down through the, through the job, cutting the key way as it goes. Plenty of lube. And obviously, this bushing is keeping things nice and straight and square. See the packing pieces in behind there. That's the cut. I just started to come through. That's what key rate's cutting a nice a nice job. Right, I've got the model set up in the the four jaw chuck again. I'm gonna turn them within within a couple of tenths. I guess see if I need to get any better than that, I've got a I've got a gauge on the one sides in. I mount the gear blank onto there. Yes, I always keep all bearing tracks for, for spacers. I've got a big box full of them, they're very handy. Make good parallels as well because I've grown very, very, very accurate, accurate size. Right, we need to work out the diamond we're going to need this for, what 40 tooth gear. Right, work out the outside of the diamond of the OD, it's a number of teeth you require, plus two, divided by the DP, which is the diametrical pitch. So we want number of teeth, 40, plus two, divided by 14. 
So that's 42 divided by 14, even I can work that one out, that equals 3 inches. So I want the blank turned to 3 inches. Fast, start looking at it. Horrible. Scary bastard things here. Right, we we'll want three inches and we've got Three inches and eleven thou. Put a four thou put on it. Fourth out of the Or a thousandth. Do that cut on the same setting, spring cut just to make sure. And that's taking nothing off. Right, that's absolutely glob on, three inches. Just jump on the two edges. Always turn the chuck by hand. When you're running close, just to make sure there's no clearance issues, which there's not. So that's why you have blank ready to go. Let's measure it once more. Absolutely spot on. It 
It's a nice make this it does zero to four inch. I've got all the calibration bars for it as well so I can set it up for every other one, two, three and four. It's more than right. Bit of real real quality here. I'm getting set up ready on the mill machine to cut the, the 40 tooth gear. I've got the right cutter out. It's cutter number six. The chain is no more different to we do. Cutter number six is 35 teeth to 54 teeth. On the back it's got the depth of cut. The depth of cut is 184 thou. So right down here, 184, and I won't forget it. I also need to make the thickness of this so I can set the cutter on centre height. Right, the cutter is 225, 235, 233 thou. So write that down as well. 233. Should be able to see that. Shows it there, the DP, 14, cut at number 6, 35 to 54 hole, 35 to 54 teeth, and on the back, 184, which is the depth of cut. This 40 tooth yard is an easy one to cut because the the ratio of the worm and wheel in the dividing head is 40 to 1. So simply you turn the handle one turn, that's one tooth. Two turns is two tooth tooths. So one turn is one tooth. 40 turns is giving me 40 teeth. Is that right? 40 to 1. So one, 40 turns of that to one turn of that. So each one of those will cut a tooth. A tooth, we'll cut a tooth out. Right, we'll get it set up. So we'll get on. Now I've got my cutter exactly on centre height and locked off. My tail stock centre and that centre on line. We we'll set this up the last time so it's all nice and square. We'll put my job in between the centres. Plenty of weight on it because it's only going to turn around once. There's a lock bolt in there to stop that moving. Lock my driving dog onto the arbor. And we'll get my two ten mils up, which grip the, the end of it. Right, if we tighten that one. That locks everything together through the dividing head. One turn, two turns. I've also put a paint mark on there as well so I can't lose it. Now we need to set my depth of cut. The depth of cut's critical. I want a bit of paper here, it's too so thick. We'll wind this in until it drips the paper. Right, it's got it there. So I know now that that cutter is two thou away from here. We'll see a thou and a half actually when it's actually tearing the paper. But there is a gap there. We'll call that one thou. 
So now, we need to turn in the Y axis. 184,000 plus the 1,000, 185. Right, that's what zero. Zero there, zero on the collar. And we want 185. It's one. One eighty, one, two, three, four, one eight five. I'll lock up the axis at that. Right, we're all set to cut our first two, so we'll turn that forward, lock off the dividing head. That's it locked off there. Quite a big cut this. There's plenty of water on it. This is the last tooth, this is where you find out whether you've got it right or wrong. You get a big thick tooth or a little thin tooth. The profile of the teeth is a look awful sharp to me, but I've done exactly what the mathematics said, so we'll, we'll cut the last tooth and see what happens. Looks good, all look the same, you can't tell which was it. The last tooth. Right, 
can certainly mesh all right. Yep, quite happy with that. showing the whole casting process from beginning to end uh, it'll probably be a 40 minute video and I'll put it up one night this week I think it's worth doing a video just on the casting because it was a, a process I've not done before using an original item as a pattern it worked out very well and I'm very pleased with it where I live is only five minutes from Newcastle International Airport yesterday there was a Vulcan bomber doing a tour of the country, taking off from Doncaster and flying right around the country, calling in at airports on the way. This is probably going to be the last flight of a Vulcan bomber. Uh, I called up to the airport to get some video of it and I was amazed at how many people were there. There were thousands of people there to watch this plane fly past. Anyway, I did get some half decent video shots. I'll put them up here. It was quite awesome to see the aircraft flying past. The noise was horrendous. You could actually feel the engine drumming in your chest. You certainly wouldn't want one of those on your case. Update on Debs. Debs has stopped more or less the same for the last couple of months basically since our radiotherapy finished. Uh, she's still getting an injection once every three weeks. She's starting to get concerned because she's tired all the time. Uh, she had a word with her doctor and he says it's quite normal. The injection she's getting will make her tired 
they affect our heart and things will improve once it stops the injections. After the injections it'll take six months for her to get back to some sort of level of fitness that she was used to. Uh, Deb's just getting frustrated now because she wants to go back to work and she just can't, she's, she's just too tired. Uh, but she's, she's in good spirits, she's doing alright. Anyway, once again, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed tonight's video. Uh, don't forget, there'll be a custom video up probably Tuesday or Wednesday. Thanks for all the support, especially the support that's still coming in towards Deb's new wife. It's been absolutely brilliant. Thanks very much. I will be going to do a video showing the whole custom progress. Progress. Bell end. It was awesome to see it fly past and to hear it. You could actually feel the engines in your chest. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to go on a, a bell end. <laughs>